Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I welcome you all to the 10th lecture of this course. The 10th lecture is on carbon nanotube and its bio applications. So in this lecture, we are going to learn what is carbon nanotube and what is the difference between single wall nanotube and multi wall nanotube and we are going to learn how to synthesize this carbon nanotubes and also we are going to learn how to functionalize this carbon nanotubes and also the various applications of carbon nanotubes. So let us see what is carbon nanotube. The carbon nanotube can be described as a sheet of graphene rolled into a cylinder. So here you can see this animation, this is a graphene sheet, it is rolled into cylindrical shape. This is called as carbon nanotube and this graphene, it is mainly made up of hexagonal rings of carbon and this carbon nanotubes can have one layer or multiple layer of graphene sheet. If it is having one layer, that is single wall carbon nanotube. If it is having multiple layer that is called as multi wall carbon nanotubes okay. and this carbon nanotubes can have caps at the ends. Okay. So we can have caps at the ends of this tube so that we can load any therapeutic molecule or we can load any anti cancer drugs inside the carbon nanotubes and we can use it for various therapeutic application. So from where we get this graphene, so we will get the graphene from the graphite. Okay. So the single layer of graphene, if it is rolled into tubular form, that is called as single wall carbon nanotube. And if you are using uh, multi layers of graphene, that is called as multi wall carbon nanotubes. Let us see the structure and morphology of carbon nanotubes. So the bonding in the carbon nanotube is sp2, with each atom joined to three neighbors as in graphite. Okay. So the tubes can therefore be considered as rolled up graphene sheets and this bonding structure which is stronger than the sp3 bonds found in diamond and also under high pressure these nanotubes can join together and form a nano wire. So let us see the difference between the single wall carbon nanotubes and multi wall carbon nanotubes. As I told you earlier single wall is single layer of graphene and multi wall is multiple layer of graphene. And for synthesis, it need catalyst and here we can produce without the catalyst also and here the bulk synthesis is difficult but here bulk synthesis is easy and the purity is poor here and purity is high. So the main important point is less accumulation in the body, single wall nanotubes it will accumulate less in the body and uh, multi wall nanotubes it accumulate more in the body. So depends on your application, you have to select whether you need single wall nanotubes or multi wall nanotubes because in some cases we need less accumulation and in some cases we need more accumulation. And let us see some of the properties of carbon nanotubes. So this is the strongest and most flexible material because of CC covalent bonding okay. and it is 500 times greater than the aluminum and steel and uh, the maximum strain it can withstand is more than 10 percentage which is higher than any material and it is having very high current carrying capacity. And also we can add any kind of functional group that is called as functionalization, adding a functional group is called as functionalization and it is 100 times stronger than stainless steel but it is 6 times lighter than the stainless steel and it is hard than the diamond okay. and it is having high current carrying capacity and high thermal stability and depends on the arrangement of the atoms, it can be metallic or it can be semiconducting. So let us see how to synthesize this carbon nanotube. So these are three approaches available to make the carbon nanotubes that is arc discharge, chemical vapor deposition and third one is laser ablation. So let us see how we can use this uh, three methods and make the carbon nanotubes. First one is arc discharge method and here uh, you will connect two graphite rods to a power supply and uh, place them a few millimeters apart okay. So that will make the carbon nanotubes. Here the yield will be like 30 to 90 percentage and you will get short tubes with diameter of 1.4 nanometer. And uh, the advantages are like uh, it can easily produce single one nanotubes and uh, 
Single wall nanotubes have few structural defects, so that is good for functionalization. And here we can make multi wall nanotubes without any catalyst, okay. And it is not an expensive method. So, the next method is chemical vapor deposition. So, place the substrate in O1 and heat to 16 degrees Celsius and slowly add carbon bearing gas such as methane. As gas decomposes, it produces carbon nanotubes, okay. And here the yield will be like 20 to 100 percentage. So, here we can get the long tubes with the diameter of 10 to 240 nanometer and it is the easiest to scale up to industry production and here the purity will be high. And the next method is laser ablation. So, here you will be applying the laser light on the graphite and it will produce the carbon nanotubes. Here the yield will be like 70 percentage and the advantages are like primarily it is used for single wall nanotubes and uh, it is a pure material. So, the reaction product is uh, pure. So, we can use it for biological application, but the problem is this is little bit costly technique. So, in this arc discharge you will be having this graphite and uh, cathode and anode will be connected and power will be applied and all the carbon nanotubes will be deposited in this okay. and in this laser ablation. So, you will be applying the laser light to the graphite target okay. and this is kept in the furnace, the furnace is at 1200 degrees Celsius and in presence of argon gas. So, this laser light will uh, vaporize your graphite target and it will produce the carbon nanotubes. So, that will be collected in a water cooled collector. So, next one is CVD that is chemical vapor deposition. So, here the gas enters the chamber at room temperature that means it is cooler than the reaction temperature and gas is heated as it approaches the substrate and gas then react with the substrate or undergo chemical reaction in the reaction zone before reacting with the substrate forming the deposited material. Here the gaseous products are then removed from the reaction chamber. Okay. So, this is a nanotube synthesis by CVD process setup. Okay. So, you will get this kind of powdered form of CNT and this is a bench top CVD apparatus. So, here the source of carbon atoms usually comes from an organic compound. Okay. So, mixed with a metal catalyst and inert gas and here it will be automated and spread into reactor with temperatures ranging from 600 to 1200 degrees Celsius. Here the pyrolysis of organic compound deposits carbon and carbon nanotubes on the reactor wall. So, these are the typical uh, carbon sources xylene or ferrocene and these are the typical ga carrier gases like argon and hydrogen can be used for making the CNT using CVD method. So, the limitation of CNT. The first thing is uh, difficulty for the mass production and second thing is the solubility of CNT in the water okay. and also it is very difficult to produce the CNT uh, uniform CNT batch wise. Okay. And the fourth one is like difficulty in maintaining high quality and minimal impurities. So, to overcome those difficulties we have to functionalize this CNT okay. For biological application biomedical applications, so the lack of solubility of carbon nanotubes in aqueous media has been a major technical barrier because these carbon nanotubes aggregate through van der Waals forces. So, we can overcome this aggregation by doing functionalization okay. and also it will increase the water solubility of CNT and it will also improve the biocompatibility of your CNT. So, how to functionalize the carbon nanotubes? So, these are the various approaches for making the carbon nanotubes, functionalized carbon nanotubes. The first one is covalent defect group, the next one is covalent side wall, the third one is non covalent with surfactants and fourth one is non covalent exohedral polymers and this one is endohedral functionalization. So, let us see one by one. So, let us see endohedral functionalization. So, here modification of CNT by putting nanoparticles inside the tube. Okay. So, we have to uh, incubate the CNT inside this suspension of uh, solution which containing nanoparticles so that it can penetrate the tube internal side and stay inside the tube. Okay. And here the endohedral function depends on this surface tension of the liquid and if the surface tension of the liquid is more than 200, the liquid can fill the nano tubes. And again this exohedral functionalization is subcategorized into three main methods. The first one is covalent exohedral function. That means, when you make the carbon nanotubes, there will be some defects. So, this defect in the CNT is the best place for functionalization. And next one is covalent exohedral functionalization. So, here uh, we can add the functional group to the side walls of the carbon nanotubes. And third one is non covalent exohedral functionalization. 
here you will be adding the polymer or surfactants so which will be wrapping the CNT okay. So by wrapping the polymer around the CNT uh, there is a phenomenon called pi stacking. So what is pi stacking it is is when the p orbitals of CNT and functionalist group interact with each other and cause less stability okay. So in this type of functionalization the electrical and optical properties of CNTs are not damaged but the stability is quite low okay. And these are the some of the other types of chemical functionalization but in this we are going to discuss only amidation and fluorination. So amidation means addition of amide group but we cannot add the amide group directly the first we have to functionalize the carbon atoms with COH then followed by that we can add the amide group. Similarly we can also add the fluorine group using pentafluoride IF5 okay. <coughs> so this will also add the fluorine group. So when you add the fluorine group so it is increasing the electrical resistance and uh, also we can substitute the fluorine with some other chemical group and use it for various applications. So let us see the various applications of carbon nanotubes. So this carbon nanotubes can be useful for bioimaging and also it could be useful for drug derivative application and we can also use it for biosensing and uh, for therapeutic or theranostic application. So let us see one by one for biological applications. So here the nanotube offer some advantages related to nanoparticles by the following aspects. The first thing is larger inner volumes. So the larger inner volumes can be filled with chemical or biological species. So it can be loaded with any kind of drug or any kind of imaging agent. So next one is the open mouths of nanotubes. So make the inner surface accessible and the third one is distinct inner and outer surface so which can be modified separately. So let us see how we can use uh, carbon nanotubes as a AFM probe tubes. So it is having small diameter and maximum resolution. So it is an excellent chemical and uh, mechanical uh, robustness makes it suitable for AFM probe tubes. So let us see how to make the functional AFM tubes. Certain biomolecules can be attached to the CNT tube okay. So this tip is used to study the chemical forces between the molecules. So it is also called as chemical force microscopy. So here you can see here the tip is having this some COH functional group. Suppose your sample is having NH2 or so it can react and we can measure the force. So this is called as chemical force microscopy. So let us see the uh, comparison between the micro electrode and nano electrode for sensor application. In micro electrode the scale difference is very high because uh, the molecule is in the range of nano scale and your electrode is in the range of micro scale. So the background noise will be very high and uh, here we need more amount of target molecules for sensing the target molecule. So but when you use CNT tips for making a nano electrode for sensing application it will reduce the background noise because the nano tips is very very small scale and uh, it can match exactly with your uh, target molecule because that is also in the range of nano scale okay. So based on that here the nano tips will be having high sensitivity. So let us see how we can use that hybridization experiments to make the CNT based sensors. So here you will be adding single standard DNA to your uh, carbon nanotubes and uh, you will take the target single standard DNA from your patient serum and when you uh, put it into this sensor this will combine and form this kind of bond that is your hybridization okay. So if the patient's DNA is forming a bond with the probe DNA that means that person is having the particular disease. So you will be having a probe single standard DNA and another one is target DNA for example so this DNA you are uh, taking from some patient serum so when it come and form a bond with this probe DNA by hybridization okay so the electrical connectivity property of this CNT will be changed. So based on that we can detect the disease. So as I told you earlier so this probe molecules for a given target can be attached to the CNT tips for making biosensor because it has high specificity and it is a very fast and direct response and it has high sensitivity even a single molecule can be also detected and based on that we can make a 
gene chip or lab on a chip. So the lab on a chip is also the same principle. For example, if a person is having some kind of cancer, so you can make all the DNA probes. For example, the first box is for uh, lung cancer and this is for breast cancer. So this is for pancreatic cancer, okay, and uh, this can be for your brain tumor. So we can have all the single standard DNA probe in the microarray based chips, okay, and when you take the patient serum. So you can take the DNA from the patient serum and you can add it to this and when it forms hybridization with the only lung cancer probe that means the person is affected by lung cancer. Okay. So instead of going through all the reactions you can have all the things in a simple uh, lab on a chip concept. So all the DNA will be here. So based on that we can easily identify. Uh, what kind of cancer that particular patient is having and we can also increase the uh, sensitivity and uh, we can save a lot of time okay so which will be useful for uh, early cancer detection and also for various infectious disease detection so let us see how we can use single wall carbon nanotubes for chemical sensor here every atom in a single wall nanotube is on the surface and exposed to environment okay so charge transfer or small changes in the charge environment of a nanotube it can cause drastic changes to this electrical property. So based on that we can make a chemical sensor which will be useful for leak detection and other applications. So let us see how we can use that carbon nanotube based sensor for uh, detecting the various diseases. So we can have this kind of chip and uh, it is a cantilever beam. If the patient serum have more amount of particular antigen and if it comes and bind depends on the number of antigen there will be a deflection. So we can measure the deflection and we can easily identify the disease. So if the patient serum having more amount of antigen there will be more amount of deflection. So based on that we can make a nano cantilever based array for uh, biosensing application. And we can also use carbon nanotube for targeted drug delivery. So here you can see here this carbon nanotube is loaded with contrast agent. So this contrast agent is for imaging application. And uh, therapeutic is for your, uh, it can be any anti cancer drug for therapeutic application. And antibody is for targeting your carbon nanotube only to the cancer cell. And we can also add functional group which will give the biocompatibility to your carbon nanotubes and it will increase the circulation time. So, this is called as multifunctional nanoparticle or also called as theranostic nanoparticle because it is having both contrast agent as well as the therapeutic agent. So, let us see how to make CNT based biosensor for cancer direction. So some of the cells will express receptor for folic acid. So some of the cancer cells like uh, breast cancer, it will express folic acid receptor. So when you make the carbon nanotubes with the folic acid, so these cells can come and bind to the folic acid. So it is not the single carbon nanotubes, it will be an array of carbon nanotubes. Okay. So it is having folic acid and your cancer cell is having receptor for folic acid. So your cancer cells can easily come and bind to the folic acid. So based on that we can make a uh, sensor for cancer detection. So here you can see here these carbon nanotubes are uh, coated with the folic acid. So these are folic acid functionalized polydopamine coated carbon nanotubes and which could be useful for electrochemical detection of uh, breast cancer cells or HeLa cells okay, which we are expressing the folate receptor and we can also study the same sample under the fluorescent microscope and we can confirm it. So next one is we can also use the carbon nanotubes for biomaterial applications. So for application to 
spine interbody fusion material, a material called uh, PEAK that is polyether ether ketone. So, along with uh, multi wall carbon additives, it is possessing excellent mechanical property as well as bone compatibility. So, which is useful for making uh, various biocompatible materials for bone tissue engineering also. So, let us see how we can use this uh, nanopore ion conductance for DNA sequencing. So, it will help the researchers to detect the errors in the genetic material that may lead to cancer. So, here you will be passing the uh, DNA through this small pores and uh, it will be like your DNA sequencing only and we can use the protein called alpha hemolysin, uh, but the drawback is like uh, it is toxic protein. So, we can use the carbon nanotubes for such kind of application. So, here you can use the carbon nanotubes for the same application. So, when you pass the single standard DNA through the carbon nanotubes, there will be a decay in the current. This is a present scenario, but in future uh, researchers are trying to develop a very specific sensor when the G pass through these uh, carbon nanotubes, it will have a different kind of uh, current decay and A and C. So, we can easily sequence the DNA and it can be a, like a low cost DNA sequencing device. And we can also make a carbon nanotube based nano motors. You can see here, it is like a nano scale uh, motor and uh, this is made up of like a gold attached to carbon nanotube and due to electrical current, it is spinning in this direction. So, let us see how this carbon nanotubes can be taken up by the cell. The one is nano needle mechanism, the other one is endocytic pathway. So, in this nano needle mechanism, it will directly inject the cells and it will release the drug and the other one is endocytic pathway. So, here the CNT will be attached to the cell and endocytosis will happen and your CNT will be in the endosome and this endosome will combine with the lysosome and it forms the endolysosome and it will degrade and it will release the drug molecules into the cytoplasm. So, let us see how to create a, a simple strain and chemical sensor using pencil and paper. So, students from Northwestern University say they used uh, pencil and paper to create functional sensor devices. So, the graphene has very good conductive property. So, when you draw a line on a piece of paper with a pencil, the pencil sheds numerous graphene sheets. Okay. So, based on that we can make a, a strain or chemical sensor. So, if you make this kind of line on the paper and if you curl the paper in one, one direction, it increases the conductivity because the graphene particles are compressed. Okay. So, while curling in the other direction, it decreases the conductivity. So, this is a simple strain sensor. So, in this second experiment, they have shown that how we can use that bendable toy pencil for making chemical sensor. So, here they use bendable toy pencil in which the graphite is mixed with a polymer binder. Okay. So, when they created an electrode with this pencil, they found out that conductivity was affected by the presence of volatile chemical vapors because the polymer binder absorbs the vapor and expands and which decreases the conductivity. Okay. So, we can use the simple paper and pencil for making chemical sensor as well as the strain sensor. So, as a summary of this lecture, so we have learnt what is carbon additives and how to synthesize carbon additives by various methods and also we have learnt how to functionalize the carbon additives and also various bio applications of these carbon additives. So, I will end my lecture here. I thank you all for listening. I will see you in another interesting lecture.